Diversity and inclusion are great things. DEI is a bad thing. And should you boycott Chick-fil-A? Spirit Life! Hey, I'm Bruce on Spirit Life. I do Christian commentary. Recently, it's come to light that Chick-fil-A, a supposedly Christian company based out of Georgia, has adopted the DEI agenda. DEI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Now, one item of those at a time is a great thing. Diversity is beautiful. You know, God created all the different skin tones. We're all one human race, but let's use the word ethnicity. He provided for the genetics to provide pink skin tones like myself. <laughs> you know, really white, really black, brown, even a yellowish or a olive tan. You know, all the different spectrum is beautiful. God created that genetic diversity. And even when you look at the backgrounds of the nations and the cultures, the music and the food, there's so much beauty, so much awesomeness to celebrate when it comes to diversity. And a company would do itself a favor by hiring different personality types, different people from different backgrounds and cultures, because you look at different things differently. And when it comes to problem solving, different angles, different perspectives are helpful. Inclusion is a great thing. Who wants to be excluded? As Christians, we should include people. We shouldn't be aloof like a Pharisee and say, you're not included in our little clique. Christianity is not a clique. A church should not be a clique. That being said, we do have to have certain parameters of what it means to be a Christian. And so we don't exclude anybody. We reach everybody. We invite and welcome anyone and everyone to attend a church service. But when it comes to being baptized or being a church member, we do have to say that includes Christians, not non-Christians. That's not being exclusionary in some sort of weird, bad, uh, looking down your nose kind of way. And Jesus did this himself. You know, everyone wants to say Jesus hung out with sinners and stuff. Well, let's put it this way. Sinners hung out with Jesus. Jesus didn't go to the sinners to hang out with them. He wasn't like in the pub, cutting loose and, you know, trying to get with the prostitutes. No, prostitutes saw that Jesus didn't look at their past. He didn't judge them by their misdeeds. He gave them a future and a hope so they could change. That was the point of him hanging out with tax collectors. Not so he could get in on the scam and keep cheating people out of their money. No, so they could change and be more godly like Jesus. So we Christians should include people. We should not look down and say, you're a sinner and I'm not. Of course, that's not true. We're all sinners. But when we invite people into the church, we should, we should say, hey, you know, here's who we are as a people. We're striving towards purity. We don't do sex outside of marriage. We don't do um, homosexuality because those are prohibited. In Matthew 19, Jesus prohibited those things. No big deal. That's all there is to it. When it comes to Chick-fil-A, if they want to uphold their supposedly Christian background, they have to set standards that homosexuality is a sin. Chick-fil-A got in trouble in the past because they upheld real marriage, traditional Christian biblical marriage, and they had a lot of haters coming out and saying, oh, you're excluding people, you're hateful, you're bigots, and they stood by their traditional values for a while. Later, they cut ties with the charities to whom they donated who supported traditional marriage. And so they still give money, they're still you know, generous, and I guess they give charitably, but it's not quite the same. Now, with this revelation that they're embracing the DEI initiative, it's giving people a little bit of concern. Is Chick-fil-A caving to the woke movement? Are they just trying to appease their critics? Even if they were trying to appease people that hate them, it's not going to work. The people that hate them are always going to hate them. They're always going to associate them with Christianity and bigotry, which are not the same thing, but that's how those haters think of it in their mind. I think it's likely that Chick-fil-A will, like most institutions who began Christian, continue to fall down a slippery slope where they eventually aren't Christian anymore. They're going to open on Sundays at some point because, hey, why wouldn't they? They're going to make billions of dollars that way. That's what they're committed to as a company, right? As soon as the Kathy family has less and less prominence within the institution, the business side is going to take over. They're going to make decisions that they think are going to appeal to the masses. You may say, well, why do they make this decision for DEI? Because that doesn't appeal to their fan base. You know, customers of Chick-fil-A have traditionally been maybe a little more conservative. I mean, I think their food appeals to anybody. There's no way even a super ultra liberal could go and eat their chicken sandwich and say that's not the best chicken sandwich. I mean, it, it may be close. You know, there's some other contenders. I like Popeyes. I like Bojangles. But 
I mean, come on, Chick-fil-A has really pretty much mastered and perfected the waffle fry. So, you know, they're appealing to a wide customer base, and there's a lot of people that are employed who are attracted to the same gender. There's a lot of people who are employed who are transgender or whatever. The difference now is that DEI as an acronym doesn't just stand for diversity or inclusion for their own sake, uh, you know, for their own merits. It's good to be inclusive. It's good to be, uh, you know, welcoming to any and all. But the DEI initiative specifically stands for the LGBT agenda. You know, it, the equity part that's sandwiched right there in the middle, pun intended, really stands for the idea of affirmative action based solely on your background, your skin color or your sexual preference to whom you're attracted or whether you're trans or something, based solely on that, not on any other merit, they're getting special treatment and elevated and normalized. Now, I'm not upset that people exist. You know, there's all this uh, talk about we exist, trans people exist. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. Nobody objects to them existing as a person. What we're objecting to is taking a mental illness called gender dysphoria, and trying to normalize that, especially for children. You know, sending out publications and children's books and propaganda to normalize homosexuality or especially transgenderism, and especially to children, is super ultra bad. So DEI as an initiative is not only bad because of the affirmative action piece of the puzzle. Look at the companies who actually reject good employees because they have the wrong skin color, meaning white. Look at the universities who reject Asian students because traditionally they've scored a lot higher and brought a lot better GPA and things like that, and now that makes them privileged. So they're being rejected even though they're a minority, supposed minority race. The DEI initiative has backfired in such a horrible way, even from a business perspective, not to mention the sinful side of it. If Chick-fil-A wants to maintain its Christian base and its Christian values, it's going to have to reject DEI, and it's already going down the wrong road. But I have heard a conspiracy theory that companies are ranked on the DEI scale. And whatever the ranking comes out to, they get more or less funding and uh, more or less considerations. There's lobby groups. There's a lot of politics behind this conspiracy theory. So I don't want to get too far in the weeds on it. But what I've heard is that there's a conspiracy to rank companies on DEI, and uh, depending on their score, they get more or less funding and considerations and tax breaks and whatnot. Certain companies may feel forced to embrace the DEI, even if their personal convictions don't line up with it, because of the financial and the political pressure. I don't know if Chick-fil-A is feeling that themselves, or if they're just trying to backpedal on some of the bad press they got in the past because of their stance on real, actual, traditional Christian marriage. I don't know exactly what their motivation is. If they're motivated by the money because they think they have to get a higher DEI score, that's greed. It's going to backfire. God's not going to bless them anymore. If they're motivated by the idea that we want to normalize homosexuality or transgenderism, God's not going to bless that either. Should you um, boycott Chick-fil-A? I don't know. It's yet to be seen what they really mean. When it was something like Target, and they just came out with such a heinous um, campaign where it was like purely satanic, really in your face, aimed at children specifically, it's right there, the displays, you can't even walk into the store without being blasted with this kind of stuff. It makes sense to just avoid shopping at Target. I'm not going to go there. Personally, I don't shop at Home Depot. Why? Not because there's not some great people that work there. Not because the truck driver or the stalker or whoever store manager at the local level is some sort of villain. No. It's just because at the corporate level, they campaigned nonstop at the gay parade in Atlanta where I used to minister all the time. They nonstop put out all their paraphernalia and supported the gay movement in such a prominent way. I can't separate my perception of Home Depot outside of that. So I shop at Lowe's instead. Is this my endorsement of either company or whatever? No, I'm not telling you where to shop. I'm just telling you, personally, I can't shop there in good conscience. My convictions aren't to the point where I will absolutely 100% boycott a place just because they stand for something evil. Because most companies stand for something evil. I mean, any other fast food place, Burger King, McDonald's, they all stand for the same garbage. 
They all do the same bad stuff. They all donate to the wrong stuff. They all believe in the same bad stuff. Do you get my point? If we were to say, oh, I'm going to boycott anything that's unchristian, well, we're going to be boycotting most things. And then where do you draw the line? Because some companies that say they're Christian, maybe they're not really Christian. Maybe they are mostly Christian, but they believe one thing you don't agree with. Where does the line stop? I don't know that boycotting would do any good anyway, because if the goal of the conspiracy that I've heard is to put companies out of business, then the companies that feel forced to endorse the DEI agenda will eventually go out of business if they're boycotted, but then who takes their place? Communists or overseas companies? Is this a path towards socialism? I don't know. I don't know what the powers are that are working behind the scenes to try to disrupt the American economy and what their plan ultimately is, but we do know that there is something going on. There's a Marxist push behind DEI, behind BLM and all these other acronyms. There's a very strong Marxist push, and I'm not for that. I have to come back then to Romans 14 and 1 Corinthians 8. There's a couple of passages in the Bible that talk about having a conviction where it's not really clear what's absolutely right and absolutely wrong. For example, when it came to eating meat that was sacrificed to idols, Paul said there's literally nothing sinful if you happen to consume meat where someone else sacrificed that animal to an idol. Because you're not worshiping the idol, and eating of the meat doesn't constitute sin, and it doesn't constitute support of that sacrifice to the idol. But some people thought that it did, and in their conscience, they felt convicted, like, I shouldn't eat this meat knowing where it came from, knowing what the purpose was behind it, knowing the intent of the chef. <laughs> and so they would avoid that meat that was sacrificed to an idol because they want to worship God. They had a true and deep genuine conviction. They weren't wagging their finger at others and saying, I'm better than anybody else. They felt genuinely in their heart, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Paul said both people are true. Both are correct. The man who thinks he ought not eat and he abstains from the meat sacrificed to idol, he's doing a step of faith. He's committing an act of obedience to the Lord and to his conscience. Paul says that the one who goes, hey, I know that those idols aren't really the Lord. I know that they're nothing. I know there's only one God, and I can worship Him in spirit and in truth, and a prayer of thanksgiving makes all things pure. And the book of Titus says, to the pure, all things are pure. And so I can eat this meat knowing that I'm worshiping Jesus alone. Paul says that that guy is actually doing a step of faith. He's committing an act of obedience to the Lord and following his conscience. So when it comes to boycotting Chick-fil-A, Target, Bud Light, or whomever, we should follow our conscience. If you just think, hey, I can't support this company and what they're standing for right now, maybe I'll support them again when they change or if they change, that's fine. That's good. You need to follow your conviction. And if you don't follow your conviction, then you're sinning. But if you say, man, all the companies are wicked. They all stand for something evil. I'm just going to eat where I eat. That's good too, <laughs> because you're going to understand that, hey, I, I worship Jesus and I'm not going to uh, focus on where I spend my dollars as much as I'm going to focus where I spend my time. And I'm going to get out there and evangelize. I'm going to continue to get on social media and explain why biblical marriage is a blessing and it's a good. And not wag my finger at people and say, you're bad sinners, but explain who Jesus is, why he has certain standards. What do you think? Do you like DEI as an acronym? Do you like the things that it stands for? Do you approve of the movement? And Maybe you think I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below. Are you going to boycott Chick-fil-A or are you going to sit back and see what happens next? Are you going to wait this out? Do you not even care? Does this not even matter? Is it a big nothing burger uh, or nothing chicken sandwich? <laughs> what do you think of the conspiracy theory that I alluded to? Have you heard anything similar to that before where maybe there is a communist plot to get rid of American companies and to bring them down by having their own people boycott them? I don't know, but I'm interested in your thoughts, so let me know in the comments below. Hit the like and subscribe buttons. This is Bruce on Spirit Life. Won't you come? Won't you come?